Hello to all of our listeners to the 3x3 Hustle Hype. This is your host, Greg Hyaf Bieber, 3x3 Asia Cup gold medalist. And by golly, do we have a sensational guest today um, joining us from all the way in America in the bubble. It might be our first person that's actually in the bubble. Thank you for joining us. 2020 uh, WNBA draft pick, Bella Allery. How are we doing? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Uh, oh, well, I'm doing great. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm in remote Australia, so I could be considered in as a bubble as well. But talk to me about how that's all going for yourself. I mean, it's uh, I've been speaking to a couple of athletes, but I mean, how is that, that world? I mean, it's weird. Yeah, no, it's definitely weird. It's not how I expected my first season in the WNBA to look like. Um, but so far, so good. I'm really enjoying, like, I mean, moving here and kind of getting settled and comfortable. Um, I'm just really, I'm kind of excited to finally get on the court with my team and everything. But, you know, it's kind of interesting because usually rookies can ask everyone all these questions about how to do this and that, but this is new for everyone. So it's been definitely interesting, like learning alongside, you know, everyone else on my team and everything, but um, I'm doing great. Yeah, super happy. So talk to me about that, the emotions. I mean, fifth draft pick. Um, I imagine it would have been your dream to always be drafted in the WNBA um, and it throws a curveball, like a, a virtual draft. I mean, those emotions. Um, how was all that? Yeah, um, it was really special. You know, my draft night, um, obviously, kind of like everything else, not exactly what I thought it would look like, but I was really happy to be home with my family um, have them around me when they called my name on TV and everything. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it's been a lifelong dream, dream of mine. And kind of that, that moment is such a special like culmination of all these like feelings of happiness and excitement. And obviously, you know, draft night, there's a little bit of anxiety because you don't know what exactly is going to happen. But, um, you know, in the end, I was super happy Dallas picked me. Um, amazing team, coaches, everything. They have a great vision for this team and stuff. So um, I just couldn't be couldn't be more excited. Was it a little bit of expectations? Like, were you, you surely had a community? Because did you were you able to do any workouts or how was all? I mean, it would have been different. Than yeah, three, no, it was definitely different this year. I definitely I got Zoom calls with different you know coaches in the league and stuff, kind of getting to know them. A lot of them watched me play either in person or in film and stuff. So. They just kind of wanted to get to know me as a person. And I felt like my conversations went well with the wings, had a good feeling for sure um, going into draft night, but um, you really never know. And so I, I, it was just really exciting and kind of calmed me down when I finally heard my name called. Now, well, congratulations. You were, you were definitely a fan from Australia uh, tracking me along. The main reason of the show, not just just one of, but 3x3, um, obviously you're experienced and, and we'll, we'll touch on that, Jamie. And talk to us about your very first experience. We see a lot a lot of um, college players. Obviously, there's the, the World Cups and all that. Talk to me about your very first, first experience into 3x3. Yeah, so it was my... Um... It was going into my senior year of college and I got invited to try out for the the 3x3 team um, for the United States. So we played in Vegas and did like a Red Bull tournament. And that was my first like real exposure to three on three. Um, it was eye opening. I, I did not know the pace, like the physicality. I didn't know any of it. And I was in a mini training camp before it started with a couple other girls um, in college basketball. And some of them had played 3x3 before. And so um, they definitely, you know, showed me early on, like what, what it felt like to be playing 3x3, the physicality, everything. Um, and so it was a shocker. I didn't realize like what it was like, but once I kind of adjusted to it um, and everything, you know, playing in that tournament with all the college teams, uh, that was really fun. My team ended up doing pretty well. I think we ended up maybe in third place um, or something in that tournament, but um just an awesome experience. And I, from there, I was selected to play with the women's series team that ended up traveling um, mm -hmm. all over the world that, that summer. Um, and yeah, it was the coolest experience. Uh, 3x3 is super different than, you know, normal five on five basketball, but 
I absolutely loved it and getting to, you know, play women from all over the world, um, travel. I mean, it was, it was super cool. We'll come back to the, the women. So, I mean, you, you spoke about it eye opener and I mean, I'm, I'm relatively new, only a year and it's a shock. Like you, you're still playing basketball, but you don't realize how different in terms of the pace of the game, the physicality. I mean, yeah. What was your first impressions? Like, and and was it a positive reaction? Like, were you like, yeah, I love this, or <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, it was a mix. I remember, like, <laughs> I, like the girl I was playing was getting away with like holding me, like pushing <laughs> yeah. me around, like all this stuff, and I was like, are you allowed to do that? Because this is <laughs> ridiculous. And she was like, yeah, they they're not gonna call it. So, I kind of learned quickly that you can be more physical with the other team. Like they want the pace to like go on, be continuous basketball. Um, but I, I like it. I like physical basketball for sure. Um, I'm a post player, so it's a little different for me, like playing inside. But um, I love like, you know, over time, like learning the tricks of the game, like, you know, how to get, you know, open threes, like how to be quick with your passes, like make, you know, quick, smart decisions. I think it's, it's really fun. And once you like keep playing and keep learning, like all the little ins and outs of the game, um, it just becomes, it becomes easier and you kind of, you just kind of learn over time. So um, it was, it was definitely confusing at the beginning, I think, but once, once I adjusted, I, I really loved it. No, absolutely. I, I was the same. I, I remember clearly like going on, most of the guys in the training camp had played at some at some point in their careers, I remember like literally driving by someone and being checked, like held up, polite. Yeah. And I was like, it's nearly an unsportsmanlike foul. And um, they're like, no, it's okay. I was like, okay, if that's how we're doing it. We, we can play it. Did you, I mean, what, what timing was that? Was that after the collegiate season or before? Or like, how did that go? Timing? Yeah, the, it was the spring, the spring after my um, junior college season. Um, like kind of going into the summer. So it was just a few days we spent in Vegas. It was like a bunch of college teams, you know, brought, you know, four, four players to compete in this tournament. Um, and yeah, it was really cool. I really didn't know like what 3 xc was all about, but it was an awesome event. I mean, there was so many good players there. They did a great job with it. Um, and it was just, I mean, just a really fun experience for me. Talk to me about that transition back to five on five. I mean, did you, was there, I mean, there would have obviously been an adjustment period and you can't do things like we talk about physicality, but did, um, was there anything you took away from, um, from 3x3 that you sort of were like, hey, I can help this, help out with confidence, help out embracing physicality? Yeah, I think everything you said, embracing physicality, obviously, you know, the college game is super physical, so it taught me to play through a lot more, especially my senior year. Um, and I mean, you end up playing a lot more like one-on-one -on -one basketball and three-on-three because -three the floor is so spread out. And so if you can get a good mismatch or things like that, you just want to go to work. And so it helps me a lot with, you know, my confidence and just one-on-one -on -one matchups, you know, trying to, you know, go score against whoever's guarding me. Um, but I mean, the adjustment, it was fine because I had a lot of time like coming back from the summer and then we have all our fall training before the season starts. So I do remember my first few practices, my teammates are like, okay, you need to calm down with the, the physical, oh, sorry. You need to calm down with the physicality and stuff. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, I think it's easy for me to kind of flip that switch back and forth. Um, and I definitely took a lot of great things away from 3x3. Absolutely. Um, you, you spoke about in previous interviews, you know, it, it took you out of your comfort zone. I'm sure being in a bubble right now is not a, a traditional comfort zone. I mean, can you talk to me about, you know, how that is and, and how you are as a player, even your aspirations of WNBA, how that's like such a, you know, like, oh, I love that mindset. Yeah, I think I've always been the player who wants to be really coachable and um, adaptable because I've been like blessed with the opportunity to play with like USA teams and 3x3 and things like that. So I've had, you know, opportunities outside my college team to compete um, on an international level and play people who are really great, you know, players. Um, and so that's, and, and I've also been on teams where my role has had to change. At Princeton, I was more the center of our offense. And then I play on, 
you know, a USA national team and that's not my role anymore. Um, and so being really adaptable and coachable um, and being able to do that in a short period of time is really important to me in my game. And, and so I think, yeah, coming into this bubble and the WNBA season, we only have a few weeks until our first game until tip off. And so um, having that skill set, you know, that ability to, to learn quickly um, and trust my coach and kind of play into the system and the role that, that I'm given that I need to be playing um, is really important to me. So, yeah, I think, you know, my experiences leading up to now have really, I think, set me up um, to be in a good position for this season. No, great mindset. It's, it's funny you talked about being adaptable. Um, you can't hide in 3x3. Was it sort of a, a good thing? I mean, obviously, you, you're talking about your you know, centre at Princeton and there's all the roles and you're going to the wings and you'll have a specific role. We know that with professional sports, you need to embrace that role and flourish. But it sort of was a... Was, it, was that a thing you loved with, with 3x3 is that you've... It's basically why you start playing basketball. Like, the ball in your hands, you're guarding every single person... Um, right. yeah, a bit of creative freedom there's no coach yelling at you until after the game um, like talk yeah. to me about that, that like whole scenario yeah I think it's you definitely have a really important role when you're on the floor there's no hiding in 3x3 um, and I really liked the fact that I could be versatile like as versatile as possible in 3x3 so you might end up guarding you know the 5-5 five, five point guard on the other team and like no one can come and help you or they're going to score. Like it's kind of just being comfortable with like being put in these uncomfortable situations that probably wouldn't happen in a normal basketball game. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love it. I think, you know, just being able to be versatile and you can't hide. There's so much space on the floor to, to go to work and to defend and everything. Um, it just makes the game like super fun to watch and it, it definitely does expose like where you need to improve. And so that's, that was definitely important for me um, in my, you know, learning process too. Let's transition to uh, representing America. I mean, it's, it's always a dream of every um, kid, irrespective of any sport, I'm sure even if you played chess, you'd be pumped to, to, uh, to where you would say, um, you played for uh, USA 2017 that you said the, the FIBA uh, under 19 World Cup. You played with Chengdu, the World Tour, I mean, and Pan Am Games. Talk to me about that pride, um, obviously representing America. And I spoke about, I've spoken with a number of American athletes and even I saw a clip um, of the, the national head coach, I think at a World Cup um, under 19 and she was, uh, former WNBA vet legend, you know, crying, talking about the pride, which sort of was goosebumps since what we all feel. Um, can you talk about, yeah, that, that pride and passion when, you, when you're playing for USA? Yeah, I think it's it's so special to to ever be able to represent your country. And, and like you said, at any level, you feel pride. And then when you get to do the thing you love most, and for me, that's play basketball, and I get to represent USA, I think um, you never take that opportunity for granted. Um, so, yeah, every chance and opportunity I've had to play and compete for Team USA, um, it, it comes with definitely a lot of pride and you don't, you don't squander that opportunity. So um, it's, it's just special. Um, I always feel like really, you know, happy and blessed when, when they pick me to, to compete for them because that means, you know, they see something in you and, and they want you to represent the, you know, USA as best, as best you can. So. I mean, it's, it's kind of a feeling like I remember, you know, the first time I was selected for a USA team, it was the U19 team. I just like, you know, it was just the most amazing moment um, after, you know, a really long, like it wasn't a training camp, I guess, just, just competing for a few days for a spot on the roster and then hearing your name called. It's just like the best feeling in the world. So, I mean, just, it's just tons of pride and it's kind of like the, the biggest, you know, opportunity possible. So you never, you never want to take it for granted. Where was that World Cup held at? That one was in um, Italy. Okay, not, not a bad spot. No, not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> where, where have you traveled so far with, I mean, you spoke about the World Tour. Where did you travel last year? So I've been to like Udine, Italy um, for 
U19. Uh, for the world tour, it was uh, China, Italy, China. Um, Canada. We were in Montreal and Edmonton um, and Russia, the capital oh, wow. of Russia. Yeah, so I I was all over the place last summer. And how was that like? I mean, is that an opportunity that you, I mean, were you even thinking, wow, like, did you sort of yeah. pinch me five trips later and go, well, what no, an it opportunity? Unbelievable. It was so cool. It was definitely, you know, a really interesting summer because I was never really like settled at home. It felt like you know, every two weeks I was packing, going on these really long plane rides to go, you know, play in another country. But, um, you know, I was really close to my teammates. It was always fun to travel with them um, and kind of get to see the world in a way that you really can't, um, you know, any other way. So it was, it was really, it was really cool. I want to talk about those world tour and, and that because the three x three tournament is such a different landscape. Like you, you said, you travel the world. You know, imagine you might have come in a day, a few days earlier. I mean, America is pretty far away from all those locations. Yeah. And then you're really you're with the teams, like in every single location, and you're spending a lot of time. And the tournament's done sometimes. World Cup's a bit different, but World Tour would have been two days and one bad game, you're out or whatever it may be. Did mm -hmm. Was that a really, I mean, I'm sure you obviously by the end of the, the fifth stop, but were you sort of like initially, what a weird sort of um, scenario, like we're spending so much time with players and it's such a, it's such a unique, I love it, but interesting thing. Yeah, no, it's super unique. I think, especially for Americans, like you said, we travel a really long way to get there. And so there's that added pressure, like, okay, we can't, <laughs> lose like early on or you know we just traveled for almost a day straight and now we're not playing any more basketball so there's definitely that like exhaustion from traveling and stuff like that that you have to to deal with but um yeah I mean it's cool because you get to you know run into players from other countries um you know it's like you said very like unique like close-knit you just kind of walk past different people and um it's just it's just really cool so um, I mean, it was, it's just fun every time. And like you said, you kind of run into the same players over and over again. And you kind of know, like, after a while, like how to scout different teams. Um, you know, sometimes like you actually get to connect and talk with them in between games and stuff. So it's, it is a really unique experience for sure. Nah, it's a, it's a small community and that's nah, cool. What was your favorite spot in all of those, those World Tour events? Favorite spot? I really liked um the tournament in china um i thought that was really cool it was my first one so i think i also just kind of like it was kind of an eye-opening experience again um like everything else but it was it was really cool to be there um we were playing in front of this like huge mall and it was t there were tons of fans there um it was really well like you know produced tournament and everything it was just run really well so um, I really like that one. Did you ever see the panda bears? No, we didn't. We didn't. <laughs> we didn't have enough time. I know. I was so sad. I wanted to, but we were literally there for like three days and then we yeah, had to leave. Yeah. And so it's funny because I obviously, Chengdu, you would have played Team Australia, which was their call, Maddie Garrett, Hans um, yeah. and Alyssa Koenig. I mean, can you remember that game? Unfortunately, they. Bad for you. Actually, they got the win, but I think I remember it might have been my first game ever. Yeah, in okay. 3x3. Yeah. And I don't want to say, Obviously. I don't know for sure, but it might have been my first 3x3 game, which, you know, obviously that that is quite a challenge when you're playing um, that group because I remember they were super, super talented um, and they they beat us. And it was definitely, you know, like I keep saying, but that was also super eye-opening because we'd been playing, you know, each other, um, like the Americans, we've been playing, you know, practice players and stuff, but, you know, getting out there with actual like 3x3 players is different. And so um, they were, yeah, very versatile, super talented. I think they ended up winning that tournament. Yeah, they did. And it's, they had a perfect leading because we just got done at the Asia Cup. In Chang okay. Sha, and then they went to Chengdu. And I always say the very first game is 
like make or break. And it's like, because yeah, you're playing and training camp's fine and you know, like conditioning any camp. Well, I don't, I don't even really know if you can fully prepare no, for a game. Like so. speed if, unless you've yeah. got two teams knowing how they play. But yeah, and then you fly in and that very first game, it's like, you've got to be ready, you know, flick a switch. Mm-hmm. Um, so they had a perfect lead in and then, um, yeah, so it wasn't that was the first game I do a match up against. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But they were, they were great. Um, it was definitely fun to play, play them like first because it set, it set a new standard for us. Um, and kind of that's when I, like I realized, you know, what, what is expected of us, of us when we get on the court, you know, next time. And so, um, yeah, props to them. That was that was definitely good competition for my first three x three game. Look, how, what's the the ambitions then? I mean, were you involved in the um, Olympic qualifying team, like uh, the the leading? Um, so I was in the group that was like trying to get a lot of points for Team USA um, sure. leading up, and I don't exactly know like how it all works. I so confused about like the points and (laughs) qualification and everything but um I know I was in season for for college when the Olympic qualifying tournament was going to happen so I think there was a group that was planning on going um I think like some professional players so yes okay yeah so then what's the aspirations I mean obviously you, you have the WNBA season is that is that a goal of yours I mean to to hopefully be in the equation for um, the Olympic qualifying. I mean, it's now it's been shifted. I think it's being played in Switzerland next year. Um, mm-hmm. I think America in a really tough pool with France. But what's the, like, I mean, is, is that is that a goal, the Olympics? Totally, yeah. And I think it's really great for basketball players that now there's another, you know, opportunity to play in the Olympics. It's not just the national team. So I'm really glad, you know, I was given the opportunity to play all last summer. Um, and I definitely, you know, if the opportunity comes, I will be, you know, ready to play 3x3 again because I think it's an awesome sport. Um, I think people are going to love watching it in the Olympics next year. Um, but certainly, yeah, something I'm setting as a goal um, to play. Absolutely. Either that or Paul. Um, I've got a few more. And, and this will be an interesting one. Um, okay. But for anyone that's thinking about in the... WM, MBA, college, or like those young up and comers that have seen the game, they're going, I mean, what's, what's your, I guess, your, your feedback, your encouragement? I mean, like you, like one, if you want to travel around the world, there's an opportunity to like get around it. But I mean, if someone's thinking about picking up the sport or, or following, I mean, what's your, your in, in regards to that? Yeah. So like getting into 3x3? Yeah. I mean, yeah. What's your, your, your words of encouragement, I guess? Yeah. I mean, for me, like the best thing I did was step outside of my comfort zone um, and try out 3x3. It was something I didn't know much about and was kind of just thrown in there. It was just kind of the opportunity came and I decided to take it and I was definitely nervous and didn't have a great idea of what I was walking into. But um, once I decided to step outside of my comfort zone, it was like really cool experience um, 3x3 is a different game than, you know, normal basketball, but you really learn a lot from it. Um, you learn more about your strengths and weaknesses as a basketball player. Um, and yeah, I got to travel the world and make like amazing friends doing it. So um, I see no downside to, to playing 3x3. Awesome. Now I want to put you on the spot here. You've got a dream team of WNBA athletes. Okay. Um, they can be who? Who would you love to? You can put yourself on the court. Who would you love to share the court with um, in the three x three world from from the current WNBA players? Okay. Um, I would put Arike on my team. Uh, she and she's my current teammate. I'm really excited to play with her. But I think she'd <laughs> no be problem. a great great three x three player. Um, probably, you know. I'm I'm gonna name wings players because I, I know, I know the best. I but, Good. Um, I'd put Katie Lou as like you know stretch shooter, um, versatile player. I think you know three point shooting ability is like really important. Um, you know in three x three, and then I would go with. I'm trying to think, 
I don't know if like I want like size or like a guard. <laughs> Versatile. Yeah. No, it's tough. Um, Wilson from Vegas would be a, a enticing. I think she's pretty versatile. Yeah, I think yeah, she would be great. Yeah, I mean, maybe yeah, and then I, like if you yeah. could, you know, like <laughs> Diana, Diana Taurasi and these like, like the ghosts. Yeah, and, yeah like yeah, There's sure. A <laughs> lot of good options. Honestly, <laughs> you're yeah. not getting wrong. With them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are you sure? Like surely, like in the lead up, you're asking them like in, in their area, like, hey, join me for this. Uh, we can go to Italy. What would be too bad? Um, <laughs> I want to finish on, and I'm sure you, it's, it's spoken about a lot. Your uh, your dad, uh, Mark, and and his mm-hmm. um, you know his pedigree. I mean, it's, it's it's awesome that yeah. I mean, obviously hasn't fallen far from the tree, but I mean, how's he helped with your development, um, your own basketball journey? Um, I mean, have you taken elements of his game? Uh, the I mean, it's obviously a long yeah. time ago, but I mean, how have you seen it? Yeah. Um... Unfortunately, I haven't seen him play a lot. Like, Has it brought out the highlight tapes? I mean, there's some film and stuff of him <laughs> from, like, you know, the 80s when he played, but <laughs> not a lot out there. So I don't, I don't know exactly what I take away from his game besides, like, his competitiveness, which he's always, like, I think that's the important thing he's taught. The most important thing he's taught me in my development is, like, you always have to go out and be the most competitive person on the floor. And then – you know, talent and, you know, skill work and training, that's all going to come, but, you know, competitiveness is key. So um, if I, if I took anything away from his game, I think that's definitely it. Um, But he's been, you know, super important in my, you know, journey, you know, with basketball um, early on helping me just, you know, fall in love with the game um, and start playing as a young kid. And then, you know, he coached me for, for most of my life until you know I was I was in high school and didn't want to listen to him anymore and so he, he had to pass me along to a to another coach but um he's been you know so important um in teaching me you know not only skills and stuff but just giving me lessons about basketball talking about his experiences it's, it's just invaluable so um yeah, I mean, he's he's a huge piece of, of who I am and, you know, the type of player I am. Absolutely. Was it something cool, like, even in, say, when isolation, not sure how bad, but you were like, well, I've got a coach I can work out with and just, you know, someone to, to uh, provide yeah. incredible support and guidance? Yeah, no, I mean, even especially now, like, what we're, we've been in quarantine and stuff when I was home, just having, you know, him who could help me run workouts and – stay in shape and everything was was super special and um just the amount of advice he can give me is like it's endless like I can call him up and ask him questions or tell him you know okay practice didn't go well today like do you have advice for me um anything like that he's he always has the answers for me and can be there to help um so yeah I'm just really lucky to have him no that's incredible well, thank you, Bella. It's been absolutely a joy to speak to you. And as I said at the start, I'll be, um, you have a lot of uh, adoring fans. Well, I'm sure you've got a lot of adoring fans, but you have a, um, a lot of people from Australia following you and, and, and wishing you all the best. Um, and there's been some good Australian pedigree that's come through that organisation. So, But on behalf of the 3x3 Hustle Hype team, um, we want to obviously wish you luck um, for the upcoming season. I know it's uh, it's an interesting thing, but uh, we wish yourself and, and Dallas all the luck in the world. And then, obviously, personally, um, well, I hope, you, I hope you're playing in the Olympics next year and, and on all that sort of stuff. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for giving us the insight. Um, for everyone else tuning in, please... Um, log in, well, not log in, check in all of our Facebook pages, our Twitter, our Instagram, for x 3 House Hyper. Thank you again, Bella. You're absolutely incredible. Um, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. <laughs>